Hi everyone, and welcome to the wonderful, weird world of AI-generated video via Gen 2. I've got a quick overview and tutorial here for you today with some prompt tips and some general advice on what to expect. Okay, let's dive in. So today we're just taking a look at the web UI version of Gen 2. I had previously done a video on Gen 2 that focused on the Discord UI. Uh, that is linked below if you wanna check that out. And you might want to because there are differences between the two, but we'll get into that in a little bit. So it doesn't look like much to begin with, but I actually kind of like that minimalism. Um, in this section, you can write your prompt and we're gonna go over how to write prompts in just a moment. You also have some controls over here, including your seed number, and the interpolate function, which actually I just say, leave that on all the time. That controls the smoothness between your frames. There's no reason to not have it on. Also, you can upscale and remove the watermark. So I'm just using the free version currently. Runway will have my money soon enough, um, but I'm gonna be able to show you the upscale difference because I still do have access to the beta version. So we'll take a look at that in just a minute. And finally, you can upload a reference image with this button. We'll take a look at that in just a bit as well. Okay, let's go check out prompting. So there aren't any real rules when it comes to generating in Gen 2. Well, I guess there is one now, it's 320 characters. Uh, but overall, uh, you can write kind of whatever you want. That said, I've kind of developed a formula that usually ends up providing good results. So the formula is roughly style, shot, subject, action, setting, and lighting. All right, let's dive into that. So the opening of your prompt should let Gen 2 know what kind of thing you're looking for. Uh, some things that I've used in the past that seem to work well are cinematic action, animation, black and white film. And that is by no means a comprehensive list. So just experiment and see what other keywords Gen 2 might know. Subject can range from obviously your characters to like a mountain or anything that you obviously want the subject of your video to be. When it comes to characters, I've had the most luck by keeping the character descriptions very simple. Things like woman with red hair in a black dress or man with gray hair in a blue suit. We're gonna expand on that a little bit when we get to image prompting, but for now, now let's keep going through the prompt formula. Shot refers to your camera angle, things like wide angle, medium shot, close up, extreme close up, though beware extreme close up because Gen 2 can get pretty weird. Action can get kind of subjective, but obviously it refers to the action that your character is taking. Though that said, that's very dependent upon what Gen 2 has been trained on. If you aim for very action oriented things, it tends not to work very well. Like you're not gonna be getting a Kung Fu fight sequence out of this. But walking, talking, running, maybe even riding a skateboard, those all tend to work. Generally, the way you wanna think about it is, does that footage exist in stock video? And if it does, you're probably gonna be able to get it. I do have a sneaking suspicion that that's the majority of what Gen 2 has been trained on. The setting obviously describes your setting anything from a volcano to a beach to a city. Now I have actually called out specific cities like New York and Rome and gotten, you know, not necessarily like Google street view shots of those cities, but Gen 2 does seem to know how to classify certain cities and kind of give you an overall vibe of that city. And finally, lighting. And by lighting, you don't have to go too nuts. Like you don't have to name specific like film or photography lights. It's more like sunset, sunrise, day, night, or you can go in more creative directions like horror film lighting or sci-fi lighting or dramatic lighting. So now let's put all of that into practice and see what we get. So we're gonna try it out with cinematic action, sci-fi film, a Marine walks down a spaceship hallway, horror film lighting, very, you know, aliens, James Cameron. And because I wanna do a sequence of these, I'm gonna make sure that my seed is locked. All right, let's let it rip. And here is our output. And it comes out a little less James Cameron Space Marine and a little more, uh, I don't know, I guess like THX1138. I'm not sure if that's too deep a cut or not, but um, we'll take a look at how to kind of archetype the characters a little bit more to what you're looking for when we get into image prompting in just a minute. Also, as a side note, I realized that I actually screwed up my own prompt. I did not call out a shot in this one. So let's take a look at what happens when we call out a close up. So by adding in close up and locking the seed, this is the shot that we ended up with. It looks pretty good. It's a little bit out of focus, obviously, with the main character and his eyes are closed for some reason. And finally, as our monster reveal, and I think this actually shows what happens when Gen 2 doesn't have a action in its library to reference. Uh, the prompt here was cinematic action, sci-fi film, 
a monster octopus, sharp teeth, floats down a spaceship hallway, uh, horror film lighting. So it's actually not bad in all honesty. Early Gen 2 was much worse than this. So it kind of has the general idea. It just doesn't really know what to do with it. So it just kind of ends up giving you a slightly parallaxed image. But overall, I think that gives you a good idea of how locking a seed will give you a consistent look. So let me chop all this stuff together and let's take a look at the final output. So trying something out with a reference image and actions, uh, let's give this a shot, because I think that Gen 2 knows skateboarding. So um, this was a mid-journey image that I rolled up for a previous video. So the prompt here is skateboarding video, action footage, a skater doing a kickflip, city street, sundown. And we wanna make sure that our interpolate is turned on and our seed is not still connected to our James Cameron monster footage. And as we can see, it does not know what a kickflip is as our skateboarder with three legs or just kind of a leg that's hanging out over here uh, does not really move. And uh, the anatomy is really kind of wonky and crazy. What's interesting is that the background is moving. It just doesn't really know what to do with the skater. So let's try revising that prompt and see what we can get. So after a few more rolls, uh, I did end up with this. Um, the prompt here is skateboarding video action footage. A skater jumps in the air and then lands. Uh, city street sundown. So our skater here doesn't actually jump, but at least it is pretty close to what we've been looking for, minus the jump and the kickflip. So one of the things that I like to do is to create sort of characters and settings within Mid Journey and then use those as almost like storyboards and kind of a casting department for Gen 2. So in this case, I ended up rolling up sort of a Bond femme fatale. It's uh, just a woman with red hair in a black dress. Again, I think that if you keep your descriptions to be kind of on the blandish side, uh, you have a better chance of consistency when you get over to Gen 2. And here we have our fairly bland uh, James Bond stand-in. Uh, this was just a spy tuxedo Bond film. Um, ooh, do we have wacky fingers? Looks, yep, we have wacky fingers, wacky finger alert. So the shot here is cinematic action, spy film, long shot, handsome spy in a tuxedo, walks toward woman in a black dress, high-end bar, warm lighting. Uh, let's generate and see what we get. And here's our shot. It's it's actually not bad. Um, we don't get the walking in there, but we do instead end up with a nice camera push in. Um, sometimes working with Gen 2, I like to think of it as collaborating with a really, really, really stubborn cinematographer. Uh, like the DP is going to do what the DP wants to do. And we might be able to spend some more time kind of playing around with this and re-rolling to see if we can get the shot that we want. And sometimes you actually can, but in this case, uh, I'm not gonna waste the credits, we're just gonna move on to the reverse shot. And we actually ended up with a fairly nice shot here. The prompt was cinematic action, spy film, medium shot, beautiful woman, red hair, black dress, turns around to face camera, smiles, high-end bar, warm lighting. Uh, so let's paste the two of those together and take a look at how that looks. So yeah, I think that actually kind of works. Now, if you wanna take this whole thing a little bit further, you can check out a video that I did with this insane work process of taking Gen 2 footage, uh, dropping it into an app called Reface where you can face swap the characters and then kick the whole thing out to Kyber. Uh, that video is linked below. It's pretty crazy, you should check it out. As for upscaling, so I did end up taking that exact same prompt and running it in the Gen 2 Discord, where again, I still have beta access and can upscale. And this was the result. So again, same prompt. I wasn't able to run the same seed, um, so obviously it, there's some differences, but um, there is actually a pretty major difference just in terms of the overall quality between the two images. So you can see that upscale is definitely worth it. Size-wise, you're looking at uh, 1536 by 896 for an upscale and 768 by 448 for a, you know, regular size. So there is a pretty significant difference. Uh, I would recommend signing up so that you can use the higher definition outputs. As a quick note, there are some differences between the Discord version and the web-based version, though I expect them to be transported over at some point to the web-based version. 
Uh, for example, this CFG underscore scale uh, command that you can run in Discord, you can think of it a little bit like waiting, um, but it just waits your entire prompt as opposed to individual elements within your prompt. So I do expect to see some kind of slider that will end up happening on the web-based version. And then additionally, we've always had this green screen uh, command, which I don't think did anything on the Discord. So I would expect to see that implemented in a future version of Gen 2. So that's my quick get started with Gen 2. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments and I will try to get to them when I can. On a side note, I am kind of soft launching a Patreon. It is super bare bones right now, but the idea is that it will give you access to a secret Discord where we can all help each other out and discuss various projects. I'm aiming for it to be a little bit smaller you know, instead of a giant public discord, though we may move there at some point or another. But the idea is to kind of create a smaller community and then branch out from there, namely because I don't have a lot of time to manage a giant discord. Again, it is super early, which might be something that you're interested in because it'll give you a vote in how the whole thing ends up playing out. If you're interested, the link is below. Okay, happy generating everyone. I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.